Are you itching to know what your infectious disease pharmacy career path would look like? Well, you're in the right place. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dr. Alex Barker. I am the founder and career coach at the Happy PharmD, where we help pharmacists get into career paths that they love. In this video, we're going to be talking about the pros, cons, the job satisfaction, the salary, the demand, and the flexibility of being a infectious disease pharmacist. So buckle up, get some rubbing alcohol, and let's dive in to this very viral career path. So what is infectious disease? Well, it is the practice of helping people recover from any kind of infection, whether it's fungal, viral, or bacterial. I had a really informative infectious disease rotation with a legendary infectious disease pharmacist named Don Scott. This guy was in a league of his own. It was a wild rotation and I almost went down this career path. It was honestly really fun. Starting off the morning, looking at patient profiles, figuring out what's going on with them and creating new medication regimens with a legend of his time. I'm really glad that I didn't go down this career path for me, but like for the right person, this kind of problem solving, digging into data, coming up with solutions, working with doctors, it could be something that's really fulfilling for the right person in of course the hospital setting. Infectious disease pharmacists do a variety of activities, which of course involves choosing medicines for infections, but of course it's interacting with other healthcare providers. It's being on PNT committees. It's evaluating new drug therapies. According to the Board of Specialty Pharmacy, there are almost approximately 2,000 pharmacists who have infectious disease pharmacy specialty certification. So something very, very special that very few people have. But I would guess that at least another 5,000 people are practicing in these settings across the United States. To put that in comparison, there's over 330,000 registered pharmacists in the States. To become one in general, you need to have a lots of years of experience, but most people get into this field through a residency, typically at least a PGY-1 and 2. The typical job titles for this are infectious disease pharmacist, infectious disease clinical pharmacy specialist, and sometimes used is the antimicrobial stewardship pharmacist. So what do these pharmacists get paid? Well, according to our research, we found that on Glassdoor, they reported a range from one 43 to down to the bottom of 86,000. Now, I think this data is off, but we wanted to report it because on pay scale, they found that the average was 121 with the highest paying jobs out of Berkeley and oddly Cool Valley, Missouri. Yeah, Missouri. I don't know what you're doing differently, Missouri, but like kudos, way to go. We found one job in Ohio that was ranging 115 to 138. This again follows the trend of clinical pharmacy. I'm so bummed by this kind of rating. This salary follows a trend with most clinical pharmacy jobs. You can get paid more or if not the same in doing jobs that don't require the extra training. I'm like deeply concerned and frustrated by this. So I have a theory as to why these clinical pharmacy specialists are not paid more. And the theory is this, you are not paid more because these pharmacists who get into these fields love what they do, they're super involved, they really enjoy the work, and they know that they would rather do that than get paid more in retail chain community pharmacy because of the stress or the workload or whatever work conditions they're wanting to avoid. So because of this juxtaposition, they're saying, well, you know, we'll pay you less than what you can make in retail. It's just a theory, but I've been holding on to this for a while. For these reasons, I'm gonna give the infectious disease pharmacy salary score a five out of 10. Super bummed about it, but it's what it is. So let's talk about satisfaction for infectious disease pharmacists. This is gonna sound very familiar to other clinical pharmacy positions, but I would say that in general, they are pharmacists who really enjoy their work, but the workload and demand can be high. It's highly dependent on the work system that you're in. I would say mainly based upon the health system that you're operating in, because some have really bad reputations while others don't. In general, I've we found that infectious disease pharmacists have on call as a part of their role, and that can be stressful, while others really seem to enjoy the problem solving. We found a few comments on Reddit saying things like, it's definitely my dream job, although I have a lot of work out cut ahead of me. 
Very fulfilling. I hit the jackpot with great coworkers. Love my job and coworkers. Love it and don't want to do anything else. The best way to get experience is by doing rotations, getting involved, finding out what else is out there. Heck, if you're already practicing, see what you could do to help out your local infectious disease pharmacist. Maybe there's a way that you could collaborate. I don't know, create a presentation together. Who knows? Sadly, there is no satisfaction reported data that we could find published in the literature, but I take it to mean that these are people who are hyper obsessed <laughs> with infectious disease. Like they're infectious about infections. You know, ID Stewardship, I think is a great resource on this. And they, they talk a little bit about satisfaction, although it is more anecdotal. The one thing to note about people who are in the fields is that you need to be a little bit cognizant of their bias. People who are drawn in by certain niche fields like infectious disease typically love it. Like they enjoy the problems that are solved within these fields. And if you find yourself agreeing with them about what they enjoy, this may be a good sign that you too could be satisfied in this field. Because of these reasons, I'm gonna give the infectious disease pharmacist a healthy score of eight out of 10 for satisfaction. Just know though that like these places suffer from the same negatives of satisfaction for most clinical pharmacy positions being that is burnout and workload to name a few. And now for job demand. So I know what you're thinking. Can I actually find a job getting into infectious disease? Well, according to our search, not a lot of jobs available right now. According to Indeed, we found about 177 jobs, 72% of them being entry level. This is very, very low. If you just typed in community pharmacist job, you're gonna see like tens of thousands of jobs open right now. I think of infectious disease as one of those niches that is often viewed in major hospitals as a must, but it isn't a top priority. I've spoken with multiple ID pharmacists who spend a part of their time outside of that practice. Like they're doing clinical pharmacy roles and order verification even sometimes in certain settings. I tend to think of these niches within niches as money, really market money, dependent. Money. When the market is good, business is good, hospital is healthy, then yes, these pharmacies get to practice within the ID setting while others are gonna be struggling during hard times. They're gonna be doing other fields. When things are bad, they're going to be practicing as clinical pharmacists and sometimes not even doing anything to do with infectious disease. And that's because of the PGY1 training that allows them to do that. As of right now, there are 94 PGY2 infectious disease programs available. Here's a trend that happens with these kind of things. They start these programs up and then the hospital wants to hire maybe the first one or two residents that graduate from the program. And then after that, they're like, okay, see ya, we can't hire anymore, go somewhere else. So they find other institutions that hire them and that market can eventually get saturated that way. Is it always gonna be that? No, because if you looked at LinkedIn and you type in these keywords, you're not gonna find a lot of applicants for these jobs. So while there's not a lot of jobs available, for now, you'll kind of have the choice of what you wear anyway you want to work. So for these reasons, given the low volume but low competition, I'm gonna give the score here a six out of 10 for demand. So now let's talk about that magic factor, flexibility. How bendy and stretchy is infectious disease? Well, we know that these roles often are centered around a professional schedule, nine to five, Monday through Friday. However, because this is the hospital setting, often these roles are sometimes hybrid, where like you have to do some clinical work outside of infectious disease, you have to cover other people at times, you can be on call which is a little bit of a bummer. Because you're a specialist within a disease state, I guess infectious disease isn't really a disease state, but you're a specialist. And with that, you get to enjoy lots of things. It's possible for you to get into things like expert witnessing, consulting, or the pharmaceutical industry because of your expert knowledge. Some infectious disease people actually transition into things like public health and advocacy, since, you know, diseases, you know, I could see it happening because if you're working in infectious disease and you see people getting a disease that could have been prevented, at some point you get motivated to be like, you know, if I could just educate enough people, I could prevent this from even happening. And we see a lot of pharmacists going that route, whether you're working for a government organization for, you know, different states, emergency preparedness even. 
or going all the way to advocacy groups and helping educate the public about things like STDs. So you can somewhat seamlessly move from academic universities to public health advocacy groups to pharmaceutical companies and even in different hospital roles. So for these reasons, I'm gonna give the flexibility score for ID Pharmacist a eight out of 10. Now that we've unpacked this career path and we've talked about these things, let's wrap it up and give it a final review. For salary, we gave it a five out of 10 because it's a six figure salary, but you're not gonna make any more than people who got less training than you in hospital or retail. For satisfaction, we gave it an eight out of 10 because for the right person, it's really satisfying to solve these kinds of problems, to see immediate benefit and get people out of the hospital. We also gave it a demand score a six out of 10 because while 72% of the jobs are open and for entry level people, there's not a lot of residency programs and there's not a lot of infectious disease pharmacists in the United States. For flexibility, we gave it an eight out of 10 because it can be a hybrid role, sometimes remote. Usually it's a normal schedule, but at times there can be things like on call and it's somewhat easy to go from position to position and even getting outside into academia or pharma companies. So our final score, given all of these things, is a somewhat <laughs> solid 7 out of 10, 6.75. It's an okay score. It's something for the right person. But if you're not into this stuff, if you find infectious diseases abhorrent, not for you. But if you enjoyed the idea of like, oh, problem solving, seeing immediate disease and knowing what to do to help them recover quickly, this can be something really satisfying. It does require more training for not necessarily more payout. Look, how did I do? What do you think this should have been rated at? Was I too harsh, not harsh enough? What did I miss or not cover? I'd love to hear your feedback and what other questions you have about this career path. I'd be curious to know because we're always wanting to make more of these kinds of videos. Thanks for watching and until I see you in the next career path video, take care.